Um, walk confident, I say face, make eye contact with them. If you walk in, the biggest thing is here. We all have in here. Keep your cell phone charged and activated and don't get lost in your cell phone. How many times you go downtown Saratoga and just stand in the middle of one street and watch people walking by, half of them will be walking like this. In New York City right now, they are actually doing a, a cost evaluation right now to put pads on all of the street posts and street lamps and street lights because they're getting so many pedestrian accidents walking and banging in the light poles and light poles. People aren't paying attention. If you're walking and you see someone coming towards you and you make eye contact with them, if they have negative intentions in mind, where are you looking at? You're looking at their face. How can we identify them easier? By their face. And they know that. They are less likely to do any harm to you if you are looking them straight in the eyes, in the face, because they know can identify them, or they may think you can identify them. But if you're walking down like this, they're going to grab that phone and be running off behind you before you even know what happened. You're not going to know if it's a male or female. You're not going to know if they're wearing black, if they're wearing yellow, because you're down like this. And those are the people that they're looking for. Make eye contact with people. That way they know, I see you. Don't try anything. Walk confident. Scams. These are going to be touched on a little bit also. IRS, back taxes owed. My first question is with the scams. The IRS calls you up says you owe $8,000. I pay my taxes every year. I know it's a scam. No, no, I don't owe you $8,000. You guys owe me well more than that. But IRS is not going to send somebody out to arrest you at your house because of back taxes. It is a scam each and every single time. The IRS will not call you and let you know you owe money. It is a scam every single time. The postal inspector is outside. I think that I don't, I'm not sure if they're gonna be talking later on. They are, they're here. Yeah, they are the perfect ones to talk to about that because they are heavily involved in all of these scams. We recently had a scam of one of our Lieutenant Gores, which we doesn't exist in our department, was calling individuals and saying, you have an arrest warrant. Again, if you've never done anything to get arrested, you'll be amazed. Some people will go, I never even got a speeding ticket. Why did you leave the sheriff's office calling me for a warrant? And so what? We will not, yes, we will come knock on your door. We will show you the warrant that we have, and we will take you to jail. We will not call you on the phone and say, we have an arrest warrant, send us money, and we'll get rid of the warrant. We're not gonna do that. No, we wanna serve that warrant. We love taking people to jail. <laughs> we're not gonna give you the option to pay it and not go to jail. No, we're gonna knock on your door and come take you to jail. Anybody calls you says you have a warrant, it is a scam, and then call us so that we can go out and make a report. A relative's been arrested. We're seeing an increase of this. A relative's been arrested, needs bail money. Send money to this so you can bail them out. First phone call should be to that relative, see if they're in jail or not. If they answer the phone, they are not in jail. You won the lottery. This is a huge scam going on everywhere. It's like the public for clearing house one and everything. Send us $500, send us $1,000, $1,500, and we'll send you the $2 million you want. Usually it's the Nigerian lottery. I've never applied, bought a ticket from Nigeria lottery. I've won it three times though. <laughs> How, I don't know. Pretty cool, once through email I won it, then yeah, twice through the phone. So I, I won three times. So I, if, if I, I think it's 18,000 altogether. If I sent in, then 20 million bucks out of half. So I don't know. Identity theft. It's a huge one, the postal inspectors will touch on. Um, it's a huge, huge issue. And it's the number one reason why you have to protect all of your discarded mail. Every 
single one of those has information that a bad guy can use to open up accounts in your name, to open up loans in your name. All of that should be shredded and should be discarded. So that way it can't be picked up because they're getting away from going to the mailboxes and they're starting to go on trash day and collect up the trash and go through the trash and everything. And because now it's discarded, it's on the street, it's a little easier to get your can than your four to five mailboxes. Now the first line of defense is youth citizen. We are out there every day, but we are not in every single one of your neighborhoods every single day. You and your neighbors are there 24 hours. You know your neighbor's cars. You know your neighbor's houses. You know if that car sitting in front of your neighbor's house doesn't belong there or not. We don't, unless there's big, huge indicators or flags for it. We don't, but you do. Call us. We would much rather go out 100 times to a suspicious person or suspicious vehicle call, and it be nothing, than go out that one time because your house was burglarized, and then, well, I saw a car sitting out there earlier. I, I, I felt kind of funny about it, but I didn't want to call you guys about it. Bother us. That's our job. <laughs> we go out to those calls. We handle those calls. Um, sometimes, most of the time, it's nothing. Uh, last year, Sunnyvale Farm Public Safety went out to a suspicious vehicle call. Um, two burglars, they were able to actually um, confirm 26 burglaries, some in our jurisdiction, um, some in San Jose, some in far up at San Francisco. Um, and so 26 burglaries they attached them to because one of the residents that lived there felt there was something funny about that car and the people sitting in it and called 911. Sonny Bell went out there, they had a lot of property on them, a lot of property in their house, 26 burglaries altogether was called for them. Call us out there. You never know when it's going to be that. Um, call report any suspicious activity. Any suspicious activity is real. You're going to give the dispatcher your exact location. So if we need to get in contact with you, you can. And the exact location of the suspicious activity. Allow the dispatcher to ask questions. They have this protocol. They have a lot of questions they're going to ask you. Dispatch system does not work. You call 911. Where are you at? Where's the suspicious activity? What's the vehicle? What do the individuals look like? What are they wearing? Do they have any weapons? And then once they get all that information, then they dispatch us. It doesn't work that way. As soon as you call, one dispatcher is talking to you, a second dispatcher is dispatching us and sending us out. A lot of times our dispatchers, you guys get frustrated. Sometimes you're in a panic, you're a little bit stressed out, you got the adrenaline going, just send the cops, send the cops. We're coming. We're on the way, because there's another dispatcher who's actually sending us out on the radio already. So a lot of times we get suspicious vehicle, Saratoga library occupied by two, and that's all we get. And as we're responding, we get the update. You know, the gray Crown Victoria. They're wearing green jackets and everything. So we'll get that on our way because another dispatcher is dispatching us while they're asking those questions. So be as calm as you can allow the dispatchers to ask those questions and answer those questions to the best of your ability. If you don't know, you don't know. There's nothing wrong with that. We go into a lot of unknowns. That's okay. Um, don't hang up on the dispatcher until the dispatcher tells you. Because when we arrive, we may have them ask you for further information or we may need to get in touch with you. There's been many times I've gone to calls to where they've been answering the door. Okay, yeah, yeah the cops are right here now. And, and we'll tell them, okay, you can hang up now. Right. We're gonna go, what is suspicious activity? Where did it occur? When did it occur? And remember, crime, criminals generally easy. Be aware of and prevent against crimes of opportunity. Don't leave those open windows, those open doors. Don't leave those bushes, uh, hiding places on your own property. Don't leave your laptop, everything in your car. Lock your doors and windows. Turn your alarms on. Please, and keep the information updated. You're going to secure all your valuables, secure location, out of sight of the vehicles. Be aware of your surroundings and who is around you. Be aware of your neighborhood and your neighborhood cars. 
Now we're going to go be just you know this one. We want to know about suspicious activities in your neighborhood. Call us all the time. I don't want to be the pest. Pest us. It's our job. Gives us something to do. Okay. If it's raining and pouring down and all that stuff, don't call. I don't like getting out in the rain, getting wet. These uniforms kind of smell. They get really heavy when they get wet and stuff. But don't call us every single time. We work 24 hours, seven days a week. Never place your personal safety or the safety of those around you in jeopardy. Make a mental note, a picture of a suspect's vehicle in Vegas. Biggest one right there, be a good witness, not a potential victim. Do not chase after them. Do not try to get closer to get a photo of the license plate and everything. Do not put yourself in um, danger at all. These are our Saratoga's um, website up on top. They're ours. Monday through Thursday, 7.30 to 5 o'clock. Friday, 8 to 5. They're closed every other Friday. Cool schedule. Um, and then our information here is our West Valley substation. We're eight, the substation is 8 to 5, but we are we are working 24 hours. Um, that is the phone number down. Uh, the 868-6600 is the phone number you call if you want to do like a patrol check request. Um, any emergency suspicious activity, any reason why you would call us, there is the non-emergency dispatch number down there, call 91, okay, so that we can get out there. Um, thank you guys very much. We will have time for questions at the end.
That's the ambulance company. So we go on 72% medical calls. Okay, that's a large part of what we do is somebody not feeling good. Okay, somebody not breathing, somebody breaks their leg. Um, so if, I just wanna say that if for some reason, if you're not feeling right, tightness in your chest, shortness of breath, um, continuously vomiting, whatever the case may be, doesn't matter what time it is, please call 911. Okay, you're never gonna get a bill from the fire department. We're not, we're not gonna send you a bill for our services. Your property taxes cover that for us, and we also contract with the city. So I've talked to many, many people. I'm a public education officer. I've been working for county fire for I'm starting my 13th year. And um, I've talked to many people who said that, oh, it was two o'clock in the morning, I didn't wanna wake up the firefighters. And they've fallen and couldn't move. So they sat there for six hours. Um, until you know a family member came over. So please, you know we're in this um, because we want to help you. So if you're ever if you're not feeling just right, please call 911 and have our crew come out and they can evaluate you medically and then they'll give you um, advice. And if you're of sound mind and you don't want to be transported, and it's really that's going to be up to you at that point. Um, but um, you know, let them do their job. They're really good at it. Okay. So I just want to state that that we get into this because we want to help you. It doesn't matter what time it is. We're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Okay. So um, in this handout, I'm not going to be able to cover everything, uh, but it is a lot of information. Our website's at the top here as well, so you can check out our website. Uh, we do have a lot of safety information on our website, and we're getting ready to launch a new website, hopefully within the next six months or so. But the website address will still remain the same. Uh, so if you open up your handout, does everybody have one? You get them up? No. 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 Are, there more, are there any more? We have some people up here in the back.
So if you're on the first floor, you open up the window, push out the screen, hike your leg over, and get down. Get outside the window. So you need to be aware of what's on the other side of your window, too, because if you have rose bushes, it's going to hurt. Okay? So be aware of what you planted up underneath your window. Um, but obviously, if it's 2 a.m. and you need to get out of your house quickly, then a couple pricks is not that bad compared to the alternative. Okay? Um, if you're on the second level, um, this is where it becomes a little bit more challenging. Uh, so if you have an escape ladder, and most people don't, um, but if you do have one, you want to make sure you store the escape ladder in your bedroom. Because if you're trapped in your bedroom, the, the escape ladder that's stored in the hallway does nothing for you at this point. Okay? And that's where a lot of people store it because that's where we store things. So you want to make sure you store it in your bedroom. And you also want to make sure you actually know how to hook it up on the windowsill and securely enough so you can go down the ladder. So it's not like an A-frame ladder that's really stable. A, an escape ladder is made of chain or heavy-duty nylon and it sways and it moves and you're gonna hit the side of the house, okay, you're gonna bump. So it's a little bit, obviously, much more difficult to go down than just a regular A-frame ladder. So if you do have them, I highly recommend you install them and practice going down them, especially with kids. And kids can absolutely learn how to use them, install them properly, and go down, okay, an escape ladder. So if you're on the second floor, use your escape ladder if you have an escape ladder. If you don't and you're trapped in your bedroom, then what you do is you open up your window, push out the screen, and you wait. You wait for rescue at that point. So you push out the screen so you can hang out the window, okay, and wave and signal for help that you are trapped in your bedroom. Our response time is very, very quick. We respond anywhere from four to about eight minutes, depending on where you live. So if you can be visible and be heard, that helps us. Obviously, if you have a phone in your room, we want you to call 911. Okay, and you can stay on the phone with the dispatcher and say, I'm stuck in my bedroom. My bedroom window faces the backyard. I am at my window right now. They're relaying that information to our crews. 